What's up, everyone? My name is Priyak Juthani, MD, MBA here at the Yale School of Medicine and Management. Today, I'm going to talk to you about life hacks for medical school. And uh, these are three simple things that have made my life easier, and I wish I had known them earlier when I started medical school. And I also think these are applicable to anyone in undergrad, high school, or even if you're really ambitious, you know, before high school. Um, these are things that I think have become very clear to me, and I think they become more and more clear the further on you go in medicine. And the more you study, you start realizing, oh my God, these things are true. And if only I'd embraced them earlier, I could have, I think, accomplished a lot more with potentially a lot less personal time and feeling like I wasn't good enough. So with that being said, let's just jump straight into it. It's going to be three tips today, and I hope you find them useful. The first one is that you can't do any of this on your own. And unfortunately, until medical school, usually I think the pre-med fallacy is that you can do this on your own, right? Like grades are supposed to be all on your own. The MCAT is supposed to be all on your own. Most of your activities are on your own. You have to figure out your way through the pre-med life to get into med school. So the tendency is once you start med school to think, I can continue doing this on my own. You know, I'm just still going to get the best grades. I'm going to be the best student. I'm going to get the best research opportunities. And unfortunately, medical school is going to be the first time you realize you simply don't have enough time. And even if you had all the time in the world, it's not enough for you to learn everything there is in medicine. There is just far too much there. And then on top of that, you're also going to start realizing there's so much more to life than whatever whatever there was leading up through high school and even college, right? You start realizing like, uh, wow, I want to make time to go running every day. Wow, I like want to get involved in research, but I don't know all of these skills. Or like, oh my god, I want to get involved in this opportunity, but I don't even know how to get there. And what you're going to realize is you need people on your side who are going to make that possible. And like the one life hack that I'm realizing now is almost everything I've seen someone accomplish in medicine that I'm envious of has been accomplished with a much larger army behind them, right? So that's one thing I slowly realized, and I was lucky enough to get incredible mentors such as Alfred Lee, Dean Engoff, uh, Dr. O'Brien, who's my advisor, and of course my family. And because I had this backing, you know, I was able through each of these mentors to get multiple other opportunities and through those opportunities, you know, learn more. And because I had these mentors, I was able to ask them when I didn't know something. I was going to say, hey, I actually don't understand coding. Can you tell me someone who can potentially help uh, decode that for me. And through that, I actually was able to just meet the right people. So much of life is just meeting the right people. If you don't know how to know something, meet someone who does or know someone who knows someone who does, right? And so I think now that I'm done with the MD MBA, and I feel like because I invested so much in a network, even though I don't know how to do anything or everything, the good part is if someone asks me to do something, I know someone else who is really good at doing that thing, and I have no hesitancy in reaching out to them. So network, 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 and pay a lot more attention to the people who are around you rather than trying to accomplish you know, minute goals. Which actually brings me to my second life hack, which is to focus on systems, not goals. This is part of the book Atomic Habits. If you haven't heard of uh, Atomic Habits, I highly recommend you read it. But I think it's very applicable to medical school because when you get into medical school, we're just so focused on goals all the time. I want to get the best step one score. I want to get the best grades. I want to be the best doctor. I want to be the one who knows all the clinical skills, all the diagnoses. I want to know my patients inside out. There's so many goals because the whole, all of medicine is goal oriented. They want you to focus on what's the next thing you should be doing. When in reality, the biggest uh, tip I learned was if I just create a system, the goals usually come on their own. So what do I mean by this? I have created a system, I think, in medical school where I have realized I value relationships a lot more than I value goals. But in those relationships, I value relationships that uh, that force me to become the best damn clinician I can be, the best damn uh, student I can be, then the best damn friend I can be. And in the process, the learning happens automatically. Uh, you are like the sum aggregate of the five people you surround yourself with, right? And if you're surrounding yourself with someone who's an excellent researcher, someone who's an excellent people person, someone who's an excellent, I don't know, skier, in the process, you yourself are picking up on these things. And so by focusing on systems, the type of system you want to create, the type of things you value, and the type of ultimately values you want to have in your life, the goals will come automatically. If you want to become a damn good clinician, it's not just important to get a great step one and step two score. It's also really important for you to be reading up on literature every day, for you to be seeing what is the latest thing that's happening in hematology and oncology. What is the latest breakthrough that's happening? What are the COVID-19 numbers looking like? What is misinformation in this space looking like? Because then when you focus on the systems to become the best damn clinician, 
then you can actually, the goals come on their own, right? Like now, whenever an opportunity arises, I don't think, is this going to help me get like a 250 on step one? I think, does this fall in the line of the thesis that I have for my life, which is to be a lifelong learner, to continue to innovate and to try to be humble and continue to, uh, you know, learn. And if it falls, if the answer is yes to any one of those three things, I take the opportunity on. Because usually when I when when any of those things happen, the system gets stronger for me to become the best version of myself down the road. And in the process, the goals end up becoming a bit easier to accomplish. Um, and I can say this, maybe retrospectively speaking, but at least moving forward, I'm hoping that these systems will continue to pay dividends. Um, and last but not least, here's the third hack. If you started doing this on day one of medical school, and if I had, I feel like I would be even stronger than I am now. Not just like mentally, but just the ability to know things, what's happening. And so the third hack is to be more than your textbooks. Again, you're taught through through pre-med. You're, ta you're taught even in high school. Just know what's in the textbook. You'll be fine for the test. When you're in medical school, you are now slowly prepping for your career. You're, you're prepping to be someone who is at the brink of the field. You're prepping to be someone that someone's going to turn to and expect you to know what's happening. So outside of just knowing what B-cell lymphoma is, it's important for you to know what's also happening in the world around us. So for example, right now, Joe Rogan has had multiple Spotify controversies. There's been uh, a lot of changes in like health tech, right? There's a lot of changes in like tobacco smoking and marginal zone lymphomas. And I'm getting emails all the time about these things because I have now realized how important it is for me as a future clinician to be in the loop about the latest literature. So it's not just important for me to know what's happening in the textbooks, but also know how that can be implicated in the real world today. And so for you, that means signing up for the New York Times newsletter, signing up for stat news potentially, signing up for things that you're passionate about and getting the most up-to-date news about them, and not just being a passive uh, reader of whatever is out there, but being actively involved and in seeing what's happening on the front line. So that way, when someone can ask you about it, like, hey, you know, do you know if there have been changes in marginal zone lymphomas? And you can actually tell them. And the reason why this is particularly relevant is every screenshot on this page is something that I read today. I didn't read it in depth, but I read like the, either the abstract or I glimpsed it. And I'm telling you this because I'm, sh I'm slowly starting to see this evolution in myself where I don't really care so much about like, what has been like shown about this i care much more about like what's the latest review article in new england journal of medicine this week what is the most uh recent health tech news to come out what's happening in healthcare today that's causing controversies and concerns that should that may actually implicate patients tomorrow uh, and, I, and I personally think it's a good thing because it gives me a lot of uh, conversation fodder to, with other uh, you know, colleagues in the field. But more importantly, I, the, the colleagues that I look up to are the ones that do this all the time. They are the first ones to know exactly when a big thing happens in their field. They're the first ones to know like, oh, this guideline just changed recently. Or they're the first ones to know, have you checked out this article? And when you're able to keep a pulse on that, you're not just like a uh, doctor in the field. You're also a doctor like at the brink of like seeing what's out there. And I think that's fascinating and I wish I had done that earlier. So to review, the three tips are, if you're starting medical school, definitely realize that you can't do this on your own, unfortunately, and the people who you surround yourself with will be the people who will remind you why you went into this to begin with. And that is gonna make all the more difference when you're actually gonna hit those hard spots. Second tool is to focus on systems and not goals. Focus on being a damn good clinician Focus on trying to be the clinician you aspire to be rather than the dude who gets a 270 on step one. When you do that, you the, 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 the scores tend to come on their own. And the third one is to be more than your textbooks. I'm going to link a couple newsletters down below that you can sign up for, including STAT, New York Times, uh, JAMA. All of these things are usually free for medical students, so sign up for them because as you start reading the literature, uh, you're going to start realizing like, wow, there's so much more happening uh, at the front lines and that's going to be really interesting and meaningful to you. So I hope you all found this helpful. If you did, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace.